Did you not say that, did he? Yeah, we leave it in. You heard it here first. Did you say that? He definitely said that. I don't know who's like this. I, I I'm going to go harder on him now. I no. thought he was like, a nice little... Not no. much space nice in there, mate. That's even more fucked than my comments. Well, well, it's just off the gas, throw bro. Darts, you're going to throw darts. I've got to throw something. Back. That is cooked. Throw a grenade at me. It might explode in my hand, but I've got to at least lob it back. <laughs> He's going to get chopped. Should we tree. introduce you? <laughs> and then we'll just continue this. I think this is fine, to be honest. I don't mind it. I hope p- people are, will enjoy it. People need to see... They need to see you guys. Like, we'll talk about it in the car. No, your... Humor is good. Mm, it, it can get, it can go off the trail. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you. I'll try and keep it. I'm turning his, turning his gears up a little I'll bit. I'll introduce you, and then you're going to talk about yourself and your story. I'm just going to tell you. You ask the question. You're going to say, like, is it so? No, okay. What's your story? As in, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, start, I'll do yeah, that. Like, what, you so, birth, what's or? your name? J2G. Yes. Okay. How old are you? 26. Okay. You joined Platinum on the 22nd. Of September 2022. That sounds about right. Join yes. the system on the 11th Octo- October 2022. Yep, after message with you. I didn't know that bit, but yes, cool. Is this on? Yes. Fantastic. How much have you made since then? Uh, 25k to date. Okay, cool. Profit. Nice. And where did you come from before that? Were you a gambler? Were you not a gambler? Like, wh- Negative. what's your story there? So, I came from a group of mates. We would get together. We'll do maybe five dollar multis, to be honest. Yep. Um, occasionally we'd go to the pub or put $50 in and everyone has like $10 on a, on a horse throughout the day. That's, that, that's the most. I, before I came and started match betting, I would hurt putting a $20 bet on. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like a tight arsey sort of yes, very person, right. which is a good thing to have if you're I think so. yeah, gambling. Okay. I think I just value money, to be honest with you. Yeah. Now, what do you do outside of match betting? Your like career, like I so. I have know. a construction company. Yep. I. So that's been well. It's just me, so it's a lot of work when you're on your own. However, I run eBay businesses. I've done drop shipping. I've done pretty much every side hustle under the sun. Yep. Yeah. What like have they all worked or failed or what to go? They all have worked to a degree and. My problem is I try to do too much at once. So nothing ever really took off, you know, to the point where it could As in you're doing multiple of these doing side a lot, Doing at a once. lot at once, yeah. absolutely right. Doing a lot at once. And um, they all, succe- all were successful. What's successful? Um, well, that's hard. You've got to define success. Turning my, profits. My, my success is... Um, it's hard to put a dollar value on it. But if you can... Make consistent profits for like a couple of weeks. Yeah, so maybe five hundred dollars a week for three months. I'd call that a successful if you started from nothing, if you've done absolutely nothing. Because when I, when we were talking before, you you are commonly ask if someone's making X dollars, how much time are they spending? That's your in your in your head. I think you factor that in yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. So music is still on. Um, I liked it. It was beautiful. What? So is there an hourly rate that you need to be getting personally for your work or is that not really something you consider well everyone's time has value Mm. and it's up to the individual person what you value your time at now most people who work full-time jobs will value their time at an hourly rate me personally i if i'm i need to be doing something i enjoy i i could be making on average 20 dollars an hour doing ebay and i'd be happy or I could make six dollars an hour labouring, and I could be completely miserable. It's not money for me. It's more. It's more. Pride's not the word. What is it? Content. Yeah. So word? you're saying you'd rather enjoy yourself, earn less than. I'd hate rather it and earn more. enjoy what I do. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you enjoy what you do with your construction? I do. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The other thing I want to add is: Are you tell me a little bit about your personal life in terms of your father? Yeah. Correct. How old, kid? 15 months. Yep. And yep. you said you were 26? 26, correct. Okay, cool. How's that been? Running all these things and the fatherhood? I've had to cut back on a lot of things because fatherhood is, is number one. Okay. You know? When you become a father, you realise you don't matter. Interesting. You are obligated to look after this child and... Not even financially, just just be there like emotionally, 
and just physically being being around the child. So happy to cut back on my side hustles and spend more time. Absolutely. Has that like when you say cut back, has it just been the side hustles you cut back on or has it been other things you've also had to cut back on since having a kid? Mainly side hustles. I, I do... I definitely haven't progressed as, as fast as I could in my business due to me wanting to spend more time with my, my son. I prefer taking him to daycare at 8 o'clock than starting work at 6 somewhere else. I like that time. Um, yeah. Interesting. Cool. Do you have any questions about being father, Lenny? I haven't actually thought that far, to be honest. <laughs> no, I'm point, a, bit, a bit behind that, so... A bit behind? Well, better way you two are probably thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, at your age, I d- wasn't thinking of it at all, to be honest with you. And the well, funny thing is, we all have plans until it happens. It's interesting, that, isn't it? Did, did you plan? Doesn't no. sound like you did. No. Yeah. We all have plans, and then, as soon as you know, your whole life changes, your whole mindset shifts interesting that how one one thing can change your whole life when, good, you, when you say you feel like obligated to obviously you want to look after your child but do you is that a want or is that like you just have to do it oh i want like yeah. i said I, I i like to take him to daycare rather than working yeah. i like to pick him up from daycare rather than working late um it's definitely a want but i think you, you do have an obligation as well yeah, if, well like even if you don't want it like you brought this child into this world Man up. Mm. What's your alternative? To not having a child or to not manning up? No, nah, once you've had the child, what's your alternative to not be obligated to look after it? What, what, what else can you do? Yeah. Adoption? I mean, that's and extreme. I, I but what if you don't do adoption? What else? Child. You can be a yeah, neglected father, mm. deadbeat, and your child. Deadbeat. Absolutely, you'd be deadbeat. I saw on the way here picking you up from the airport. This could have been just a random. Thing and I, had to, I told like you psych- in the car. Psychiatrist is like psychologist. Why? One of them. I don't know because you're pretty. You you read people well. He loves psychology. Uh yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it it's fascinates me. But I saw a, a pram to a couple, so I didn't see oh, yeah, how yeah. it happened. Yeah. But it must have been on the edge of the curb. The pram fell onto the fucking <laughs> road, and the kids were like this. They fell out of the pram and. I don't think they hit their heads, but they were like shitting themselves because they would have been like maybe a year and a half, two years old. <laughs> and like, there was sh- like a big shamozzle there. Like, to be like oh my God. Was it an accident? Pram. Yeah, obviously. But like yeah. it fell suddenly and I was, as, as I was driving past, I see these kids' heads just like So it fell into the like the gutter, you said? Yeah, it must well, have been shouldn't like even be near the gutter, to be honest Yeah, with off you. the curb, correct. Get those parents. Um, but obviously when you're travelling. Give them the rinsing. Yeah. I didn't, but. Hopefully they're all good with their kids. Yeah, hope the kids are fine. I think they were twins, but yeah, it, was, <laughs> twins. it was quite interesting wow. to see. Never seen that before. Twins twins on a curb, never seen that. On a pram. <laughs> That's what they're doing, double strollers for, so you put the two kids next yeah. to each other. The what? The double strollers. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I okay. guess. Double one. Yeah. They were both in the pram. You can get quad ones too. Victor yeah. Day. That'd be negligent, having two kids in the one single pram. My dad was a twin, but I don't think I'd carry over what, the genes. sitting on top of each other? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be... be, I would be not, I'd, yeah, it wouldn't be... Uh, that'd be pretty negligent. Yes. Um, Correct. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we spoke about some stuff before this officially started. Whether <laughs> this has already been put in, we're not sure. But Lenny has a question for you. <coughs> oh, firstly, let's just talk about why you're here. Yep. And then we can just talk a bit more generally. So... Why are you here? Um, am I allowed to? You can say you're with Lenny, yeah. joining the mentorship program. I joined program, the mentorship yeah. with Lenny. I thought, as a reflection th- th- that I said before, that I always do too many things at once, I've come to the conclusion that I should nail down on one thing and do it all the way. Match betting has been quite successful. I know there's information that I don't have, so that's why I took the plunge and joined the mentorship. Because... I was talking to you in Japan yeah. and I reached out to you about like something that I was going to ask you and then no, you I thought I was you, fucking... You, I tell you exactly what you did. I yeah, said something you in the Discord explain and you, that? you completely deleted my comment and you says, none of that talk in the Discord, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely <laughs> and stuff that... I said, that gotcha, and you, then you're like, I love you. <laughs> no, nah, like I, I you messaged did. you that because I know you and I've spoken to yeah. you for a good 
fuck, I don't even know. You you were watching my Twitch streams, the only person watching for like an hour and a half. So, <laughs> so yeah, we've got to show support. <laughs> That's probably but because I like you as an individual, not as the um, the owner of yeah, the system yeah. or hustler. Well, and we're talking about that in the car. What happened then? What, like, why were you joining this? Because I didn't ask you to join or, or like push sale on well, you until after you said you were going to join. Listening to all the podcasts about the mentorship really got me thinking, and I was definitely going to join. It was just a matter of when because I was planning on joining May, June, July this year. And then, this, for some reason, I just thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't know how the conversation went, to be honest with you, but I just thought, oh, I'm speaking to JP now, and I just told you, yeah, I'm joining the mentorship, I just want to wait a bit, and then you, you know, convinced me not to wait, which is yeah. the right call. I think this is a common thing with a lot of people in anything. People who've already made their mind up to do something, and then they say, I'm going to do it in a year. Like, obviously, there's scenarios where you have to wait or whatever, but... We always see it. It's like the people who wait end up so far behind the people who just or jump don't in. do it in the first place. Yeah, it's for anything. Correct. When, like, when in real life do you go? I'm going to do this in a year. Yeah. In any other situation. Well, it yeah. could be like having a kid, or it could be like, I don't know. You're locked into a business and you're you're in a full time job that has a contract to like yeah. three, nine months or whatever stuff like that. But in terms of something like this, it's like if you've already decided you're going to do it, it's kind of like negligent to yourself to not do it quicker because then you it's not it's not a delay that's going to be like what's the side effect is if you don't do it you just miss all this progress we see it all the time we don't you don't get time back in life what do you yeah like me personally i could have joined that day so that day is a bit extreme well you know what i mean we have to put the process in place to get here and you're from new south wales whatever so but i was able to and i was going to wait after speaking to you, I decided not to wait. Yeah, interesting. What's my, what's my cost? What's my, you know, what's, is it opportunity cost? What's my opportunity cost by Pretty waiting much. five months? Yeah, the, literally. And w- this is, yeah, it's funny in life, that's what happens. The people who wait end up so far behind the people because everything else compounds in the progress side. But, um, okay, back to the question we're going to ask you. So what are your plans now? It's after knowing that, how much you want to make in the next 12 months? How much you want to make? Six figures, baby. Okay. Cool. And prior to that, it was only 20, yeah? 25K, yeah. I did have a break from the... No, as in how much you wanted to make before oh, I sorry, to yes. join this. So in our the Discord, we have an accountability yep. section. And I put, I wanted to make 20K net, so probably 30K profit and um, in the next 12 months. Yeah. Yep. Why do you say net versus... Are you talking about sustainability? Correct. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I like numbers and I nerd out a bit on numbers and I like to know exactly where it's going. So you've tracked everything, yeah? Um, not like bonuses or anything. I stopped that maybe. Um, actually, I looked last last night. It was in May last year. I stopped tracking. Okay. Yeah, because I know it works. You know, and I was trying to think, well, how can I be more efficient? Do I need to? Do I need to track it when I know it works? Well, yeah, that's a year in. A year in, or just under just eight under, months in. Just probably nine months, maybe. Yeah. So, but you're still tracking profit. Correct. But not specifics as to like where no. that now i wouldn't recommend that for most people because most people can get a little bit stuck when they're not tracking and you get a bit lost and then they can start relying on how they're feeling based mm. on how, how they're acting but i think for you because you don't have that gambling mindset in you you never really had it i'm happy for you to do that and obviously lenny will talk with you more about it but like yeah as, you're still tracking your profits because absolutely most people gambling outside of these communities they don't have a clue what they're winning or losing they, yeah. just, they just do it because it's fun and whatever else and i used to yeah. i used to um track my profits weekly which is horrible i do not recommend that yeah that was what i used to do was at the end of the the sunday after the sports system and the the horses i would tally up all my accounts and 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 i'll have a figure i've stopped that and i haven't tracked since um december last year and i won't be tracking until this december coming so it'll be yearly instead of weekly why has that? Why do you say weekly is shit? It just invites emotion to the variance and to the result weekly. You can't think of weekly when you're investing in anything. I think, to be honest with you, I'll try tracking daily. No, yeah. I don't want to. So okay, that's fine. What is um, what does your partner think of all this? Does she know what you're doing? And yeah, yeah, and she to does. The level, like, what level does she know this? How, does she understand it? She understands it. She, she actually told me she tried to explain it to her 
sister the other day and she couldn't so yeah she just knows that i this is I, i've just she always she's always known that i've always tried to invest or try side hustles i'll try this i'll try that so she knows i'm always looking and how to invest how to make money so she definitely she, yeah she knows that i do match betting i've sent her the the podcast and the videos and yeah do you feel like that's helped you become better at match betting? Because there's a lot of people out there that aren't supported by their partners because they either don't understand it, they they don't think it works, or they keep it as a secret because there's a number of members who mm. struggle with it actually explaining it because there's so so much taboo around gambling, and then they fall into a hole where like it's like external objection. Yeah, they have they have this kind of feeling just. Yeah. Pressing on them from the outside. It's yeah. interesting you say that. I was trying to explain to a friend, oh, I've made this much, you know, we're betting with Edge. And the common response to it, multiple friends are like, cool, man, and they just move on. And I know that what they're thinking, they're thinking that I'm just gambling when I'm not. So there's, yeah, the, the taboo around what we do is... These are non-gamblers, I assume? These are non-gamblers. Yeah. And I might be coming... Be, be, uh, coming more selfish in my ways. When I first started, I was trying to tell everyone, say, hey, this is like the best investment. Do this. Trust me, you don't do this. And now, I'm, I'm pulling back. I don't want to tell people. Yeah, we've all experienced that. Like, yeah. At the start, you trying try to, to convince people. everyone, yeah. try and get them on board. And then it's just like, if you don't want to listen, I can't invest my energy into that because if you can only lead the horse to water. Yeah. Now, I'm talking like when we were betting, not now. We obviously have to, Yeah. we're running a, uh, a company and a business that, is trying to teach people so but even then like we're seeing more and more if we invest so much time into the people that are less along the spectrum of weapon we're just wasting resources that could be invested into the weapons yeah. of the community which we're going to get more results out of for them for us everyone's high level it's just like we have the ability to do that now because we have more weapons which is cool um your question <laughs> um, drop it. i know your I guess not a fan of the Matrix, we'll call it. <laughs> I'll jump straight into it. So, what's like the Matrix? Yeah, I'm looking at the camera. <coughs> oh dear. <laughs> what's the so Matrix? What is first? the Matrix? I'll let you explain that. What's your kind of. We've spoken a little mm. bit about this. Give him that question first it's so hard. you can prime him for it. Yeah. About things we're told okay, to do. Okay, so do you think people do what they are told to do, quote unquote, told to do more often than they should? If so, why do you think they do that? And do you think that benefits them or it takes away from what they can be or can do i think people are sheep i don't think people think for themselves and honestly some people shouldn't think for themselves why is that because i don't know actually so do you think there's like some people that should listen to what, what they're being told to do? Yeah, well, what's that bit about? I didn't get that bit. I'm just trying to um, articulate it in my brain so it sounds good coming out of my mouth. Well, Lenny, what's an example of someone doing something they're told to do and they potentially shouldn't be doing, you're saying? We were speaking about it before, but the vaccine. Everyone's being told to get vaccinated. Yep. But why? Well, there was fear from the government. Yeah, from correct. The Matrix. Well, let's not get into that like debate because well, well, uh, people. Well, no, I didn't know specifically about like. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Whether it's real or whether yeah, it's a yeah. cold, whether it's like people. More so, just thinking. Died not, from not it, whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah, I like how Lenny said it. Like, a lot of people didn't question why. Like, that's an example of a, a decision. They just did it, and the consequences were created out of. I think fear of like oh, i have to get this because i've got to go to my job my job requires it but like why like did, did, like a lot of people didn't ha think they had a choice because well, they if were their job is saying you need to get this then they need like they have to they have no other way to provide for themselves or their Correct. family so they have to get that vaccine because they had to get paid yeah someone close to you did that didn't they oh many people yeah yeah, yeah which annoyed me because like that's not how I would have done it if I was in that situation because I'm not saying I'm not against that stuff, but it didn't make sense to me to do it. Because but it's you're against not thinking about it. Correct. Yeah. Fully against not thinking about what you're doing. 
It's the same with houses. A lot of people just do, yeah. do the house thing. Not against houses, against not thinking about it. So just buying a house for the sake of buying a house because everyone else is doing to do that it. Is, I think that's incorrect even with the people who buy houses. Like, you know, at the masses, that's incorrect to just buy a house to buy a house. Yeah. You need to leave a motion at the door and look at the numbers. Like my best mate's got a mortgage, but he thought about it for a year and his reasoning was he wanted to be able to like, if he wanted to take a shit on his wall, he can. It's his. <laughs> or if his dog wants to take a piss in his living room, it can. But like, he, he knew that he could rent... He understands the whole thing, decided to buy a house because he wanted the emotional, oh, that's my house, which I'm fine with. He thought about it. Thought about it. No, no problem. But it's when you, you become a, a slave to your finances because you thought you had correct. to do it. Or your mates are buying houses, their families and kids, and you're just like, well, I need to buy a house. So, do you think that happens a lot? Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It's, everyone does. Can't say everyone, but so yeah. You could say Ooh. that people are judging people. themselves with their peers. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, yeah. That's probably that's probably a huge factor into why people do what they're, I guess, told because. Oh, everyone I might buy a, a new car because you know their mate got a new car, or people they went to school with have a new car. Yeah. So yeah. it's so it's peer pressure in a sense to do what like they're told. Australia is a very judgmental society as oh, well. Yes. I just went to Japan. Now I didn't speak to Japanese people because not many of them speak English, but just from the vibes. Everyone minds their own business there. Like, they don't... It's weird because, like, me personally, I'm a very curious person. So, I'll, like... My missus rinses me on this, my fiancé. I, I, I don't stare at people, but, like, I'll observe and I'll get too deep. And, like, if they're watching me, they probably think I'm a creep. He's going to catch a case, this bloke. He stares. No, but, like, I'll, I'll take in human behaviour and I'll pick up on things. And, like, she's like, stop staring. And I'm like, okay, sorry. But, like, in, in Japan... <laughs> No one looks at each other like they're just in their own world. Now, whether that's good or bad, not sure, but they don't, there's lack, they don't seem like they're judging people. They don't think they're comparing. Like everyone wears different fashion. Everyone's doing different shit, and no one gives a fuck about the other person. Now, I don't know internally if that's what happens there, but that's the vibe I got just off the street. And I feel like here, like I don't really associate with trains and all that stuff. I sort of keep in the business, go home, sleep, go to the gym, whatever. So I'm a little bit out of that. Don't go out. Um... But then I think, like, even for social media, we, we just see people, like, constantly hating, constantly um, just getting triggered by shit that gets posted, personally attacking people online that you don't even fucking know. Then that person's attacking someone else that they don't know on their comment, disagreeing with him. And it's just like, what, what, what are you doing? Yeah, and, uh, what are you achieving from that? Exactly right. Uh, like, you've got a social media presence. Yep. You posted handyman videos and stuff like that. Correct. Have you experienced that? I've experienced everything under the sun. <laughs> I've experienced fully grown men with families degenerate to children g- calling me like the worst names you could imagine. Like what? I can't say it. No, I say it. Like just telling me to like unsubscribe from life. <laughs> is a good yeah. way of putting it. What does that mean? You know what it means. Well, I think if we talk about it, it's actually fine. Yeah? Yeah, talk about it. Well, they're just telling me to kill myself like they wrote wrote that yeah and tiktok allowed that to go through well they you know after oh, an hour proof. it will come up saying this was removed but they still filter. wrote it yeah, yeah yeah so it gets through the filter yeah, yeah sometimes right. and then sometimes it doesn't you have to approve it um yeah, it's, it's interesting <laughs> social media especially in australia i've heard a lot of australian celebrities say that we have a very bad case of tall poppy syndrome in australia yeah i didn't know what that was two years ago yeah but now it's your favorite it. word it's your favorite word now is it it's very common yeah, it is. But, like, I'm not saying we're the only ones... Like, you just go on any social media creator yeah. and just read the comments. Everyone who's successful or has some degree of clout, like, audience, they're just getting rinsed. Yeah. By his fucking fake accounts. Exactly right. People, like, the funniest thing is when you you can actually join the dots and then you find that that person is on their fourth yeah. blocked account that's been on your profile. Yeah. And then you see that they're, like, a father of two... And they've got their kids and they're 25 years old and you've spoken to them in the past and they've admitted to losing yeah. money every week and you're just like, bro, you just hate your life and you're hating on us. Like, fix your life. Yeah. Meath Keeve Stiller. Steve Keith Miller, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He, he, I don't think he's like someone who's... I think he's just a full-on troll. He doesn't say anything bad. But he's like... But again, he's not saying bad, but he's there he's in the first his five time. minutes of every video we post yeah. on yeah. some seventh account yeah i think he's just like obsessed with like 
being a troll, but like he's not telling someone to kill themselves online. Like, but again, he's like, level. from what we know, he's like, a, what, he's like 50, 60 years old. He's yeah, got You're got right. family. He's got. The, the funny thing is, is when you see the same people comment on your videos, then doing the same thing on yeah, you see like other crime videos, trains yeah. or someone else's algo. It's like, bro, <laughs> what are you doing? It's, it's, it's interesting how, how people think and how they act differently online than they would in real life. Yeah. And I'm not saying, oh, you, you know, you wouldn't nah. say that in real life. Even if the person you're speaking to is not threatening, you still wouldn't say that in real life to that person just because out of decency. I guess being, like, online it gives a false sense of security, maybe, or even, like, like a, a mask. As in they, th- they think they're, like... Because they're hiding behind the screen yeah. or whatever, they can just say whatever yeah, they want. Exactly, it's interesting that I, I've had videos where people, where someone has abused me. Yeah. This is funny. Someone has abused me. I go on live. I talk to them, have a dialogue. They're like, you know what? You're actually okay. Next day, I'll post a video and they abuse me again. It's, it's just, it's fascinating. That makes sense. It because doesn't make sense because you think when they came in, they would understand that I'm an okay person. <laughs> yeah. But then I, the next video I post, they're saying I'm a flop. Mm. Well, they must have had a bad day again, and they're not happy with it. Seems, well, just seems uh, everyone having a bad the, day is coming to my TikTok. They're back no, they're <laughs> everywhere. They're back in the comments. So they don't have to face you face to face. They're well, just it's, it's things funny, acceptable. Isn't it? yeah, there was yeah. a guy who was hating for two and a half years, and I had a call with him the night before I went to Japan. I recorded it. I want to post it eventually. And he, but after the call, he's like, "Thanks for having this call, man. You've completely changed my mindset on on yeah. you guys." And then he's then he's actually supporting us in the comments now. That's a, that's a good result. We've had many haters actually join. Yeah. But like, then there's still like the ones that are just full on, just next level. It's pretty funny. How, how do you uh, deal with the hate? Oh, you, don't, you don't deal with it. It's just there. Like, you just got to accept it. Yeah. You can't let the hate get to you because if it gets, like, like Tricky started um, being part of our team now and they're not even hating him and he's like, bro, what the fuck's wrong with these people? Like, I've never seen this before because he's never really been on TikTok much. But if, it, if, if you let the hate get to you, like, you're done. They'll, but you just got to like look at it as the quote, famous quote: "A hater doesn't hate someone above them." Or yeah, whatever. it always comes from uh, below. below them. Sorry, is that right? No, but above them. You'll never meet it. You'll never. You'll never meet a hater Do doing the better quote, than you. Please, because yeah, you'll yeah. never meet a hater doing better than you. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <coughs> but yeah, that's fully true. I think. I think so too. Yo, yeah, well, they're all absolute fuckwits. <laughs> like you look at their profiles, and they're all well, the same. You, you can't say that because you don't know them, so you're kind of doing you're what actually, they're doing. Yeah. You're no you're better. <laughs> yeah. Get, Fair in, get in the comments. We'll finish this. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's me. just like. But the, even the thing again, like I've always, I've taken a different approach on it now. I'm like, we we used to hold back from saying, like you hate your life, fix your life, but that's the reality. It is. And but we we used to say like things like, think about what you're saying. You can like hurt someone because someone that doesn't um, accept hate and it gets to them, man, you, you could don't kill. Know what can you happen. could end up making them commit suicide. Exactly right. And then you got to live with that for the rest of your life. And you probably won't even know that they, they no. commit suicide. And that's even worse. Uh, worse. But, yeah, I think now just call it for what it is. Leverage the hate. Like, that's the thing as well. Keep they on hating. They don't understand that they're <laughs> helping you when they're hating. It's like, whatever. It's there. Can't acknowledge it too much because then it takes you away from your own resources and energy. But it, yeah. you've got an f- ability to... Um, you can use it to your advantage as well. At the start, I was getting a lot of hate. And I, I used to read the comments, which was definitely not what you should do. And I, it did get to me. I used to delete videos. I used to... There was one day it got to me and I was just having a bad day. I'm like, there's no way that this person who I don't even know has, has, give, has made me have a bad day. So now, I still can read the comments and I'm completely fine with it because I know it's coming from beneath. And I actually encourage... I try to persuade my videos to get hate because the algorithm loves when people comment and share it doesn't matter what they comment yeah no, that's what <laughs> it's on. it's just metrics so I, I actually put videos up to try and garner attention that way yeah because it's it actually amuses me it's kind of fun for me now i enjoy well it. yeah we did that for a good year the old beckingham tiktok 2021 to 2022 yeah that was after got like 17k got banned but mm. like that's how this whole audience yeah. a lot of people came from there i did so um, did you you came yeah. from that it's crazy isn't it but i used to be very like uh triggering like t- calling 
things out. Like, and I wouldn't post that anymore. Because back when we first moved to the office and you're every day just replying to comments in the morning, you and Tom just... Well, <laughs> you can make videos on, like, comments yes. and it's just free, free videos. Yes. Yeah. But then eventually it's like, how much can you do of that? Um, and then it links to the... All the people who've watched that video, it links to them as well. Yeah. A little, little tip for you. It's good social media. Just, how have you found understanding social media? Like, how well... Like, you have Instagram or just TikTok? I just have TikTok. I have our YouTube as well. Yeah. Uh, if if you gave me a choice, I'd much prefer to grow the YouTube over TikTok. Yeah, which is harder to do. Definitely. That that that's the reason. You value YouTube more. Um, has TikTok helped you make money? It has. It has. It has helped me made some make some money, especially from the TikTok lives. Okay. Yeah. In Australia, we don't get any ad sense from the views, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, TikTok lives is where the money is made for for most people in Australia. How many lives have you done? That's a good question. It's definitely, it would be probably over 20. Is this all match betting lives? No. No, no. So just I started doing that. Gaming? What was it? No, it was just talking to people. So you, you just, just sit there in front of your computer you talking? Just yeah, you just join other people's lives and you're doing like a FaceTime call. I'm working. On live. I've got the earphones in. I'm talking yes. to people while I'm working. Yeah. And they can watch me work. And As in you're talking to customers? I'm talking to these random people who are joined. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm working and a lot of them will, will say... You know, it's actually, oh, they don't say much because TikTok live comments, because you're there and you can respond, I get rarely any hate from yeah. from them. Yeah, it's different when... Yeah, it's different when you can reply back and have dialogue. Yeah, it's interesting. Reduces right, it. It? Yeah. I still think they come on. Yeah? They definitely... We, oh, we've, I, I've, yeah. Had, yeah, I've had people come on and I, sp- I, s- like I speak to them and then they leave saying, you know what, you're actually a good bloke. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I know I'm a good bloke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. I know I'm a good bloke. Yeah. Well, back to back to the original question that started that. Do you think people benefit from not thinking about what they're doing? It's just a hard question, isn't it? Because not, not everyone can be free thinkers. I don't think everyone can, can, Why not? can think. What's free thinking? Well, not not doing what you're told. Thinking logistically, looking at your situation. Not doing from it, multiple not, and I wouldn't say in a defiant way, not doing what you're told. Like processing what you're told. But like, what else? We, we here's his the example. Um, the COVID think situation, the mortgage stuff. I, I would say that's less like t- doing what you're told. It's more like doing what everyone else is doing. Going to university, getting a Go job. On, that's a good one. <laughs> Going to uni is definitely a good one. What, what do you? What do you? What's your thoughts on uni? <laughs> well, when I'm going through school, I'm thinking, what the fuck am I going to do? Like finishing school, and then you see you, you see everyone going to uni. I've applied myself, and I'm like, oh. I can just go to uni. It's it's kind of the easy option, I guess, because realistically, no one knows what they're doing when you come out of school, and then uni's just there, like offers everywhere, kind of thing. Especially yeah. this early entry shit and all COVID affecting that. Like everyone's getting into uni these days, and it's just it's almost easy path out. Yeah, I disagree. If you're going to uni just to go to uni, don't go to uni. Which is what are you doing instead? You got you got, you should do a lot of things if you go what you enjoy and what you like. How do you do that? Trial and error, doing a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so doing a lot of things to most people, like a lot of people don't have different initiative jobs. to do things. So what, well, yeah, different them, jobs? Yeah, so if you said don't go to uni, but if you just finish year 12, you've got 500 bucks to your name, yeah. what do you do? $500 to my name, I would... It's hard because I am aware, I've always been like business mindset. So I would say I'd get a part time job. I'd try and start this business, see if, it fa- see if it works, it fails, move on to the next. You know, take the lessons and that's what I'll do. But not everyone else, not everyone has a business mindset. Some people need to go to uni. Lawyers, doctors. Yeah, yeah of course. But generally, those types of people know what they want to do. Yeah, but if you're going to uni, if you're uh, like, I don't think a business course in uni is going to teach you as much as four years of starting businesses, failing because you don't understand something, I agree starting that. again. Taking that lesson, failing because you didn't manage your money, I reckon it's going to be cheaper too. Yeah. When it's, when it's like very open-ended general topics, like at uni, then it, then it becomes really, uh, it's a dangerous one. Because like you can go and study like arts. But it's like people do these business like and arts not, degrees and then they get like, they get three years in and then they go major in something because they... They're like, oh, Which is I fine. Can't, I kind of have to do this now, and they get thrown into some accounting job that they potentially don't want to do, and they end up hating their That's lives the in hating their lives in three years' time. If they don't want to do it, it's bad. But if they like it, it's fine. Like, but it's almost like you get to that point of your uni degree, and you're like, "Fuck, I have to kind of use this now." And then they go 
use that uni degree for something like that. In five years time, they'll be. You it's know, called depressed. sunken cost fallacy. Yeah, I think you join something or you do something, and then it's like clearly uh, clear that it would be better for you to quit that, but because you invested so much time and effort Stop. and money into it, you're like, well, fuck, I've got to make it worth it. Yeah. Which was like my mum. She was forcing me to do osteo. For, not forcing. She was telling me, encouraging me to do osteo. You, you've, you've like gone to uni for five years. You've got to commit it to it now. And I'm like, it kind of, it kind of made me feel a bit bad um, that I'd gone into uni and, and not gone through it a bit. But then after a while, I'm just like, nah, this is not what I want to do. So yeah. fuck it off. Simple. You can cut this out. But was that because they, you didn't have to pay for it? People hate this, but my parents pay for my uni. For the first four years and then i told him you're not paying for the last year because i simply so might not do it coffee. obviously people are oh that's fucking because other people would have had a hex that i've got an advantage there mm-hmm. which is definitely valid but then like i was like no nah, you're not paying for the last year because i reckon i won't be doing it in three but why do so they hate paying that? for it why do they hate that because they had to pay for it themselves no nah, no nah. they're comparing themselves nah, to you and they're nah, like oh, you nothing could. to do with money it was more just like no but why would other people hate that you're saying that oh because <laughs> they're a victim to their own situation no, it's, it's, it's valid though because like they, they don't have to pay they had to pay themselves so, so why are they like comparing themselves to you that I did. Uh, maybe, they, maybe some people don't like it. it's like when someone goes successful there's like a funny video that someone made out of it it's actually spot on it was like a compilation of all these people that are like achieving something really good and then there'll be like a, some guy in the background that's like designed to be some random at home like oh did you see like Sue she bought a new house mm. and then the guy's like yeah but and mum just gave her her inheritance. And it's like, there's always like yeah. a justification or, uh, for something against it. But yeah, um, what, what my mum said was like, you've got to do it now. Like, it's like a cool name to be called an osteopath. Like, you've got Doctor. to like... That, my parents, my dad was an air conditioning mechanic. Mum was the sort of accountant for that business. But like, it's, it's unconventional. There's no one really in our family that's done unconventional shit of like going and starting a match betting business. Like, yeah. it doesn't really... It's not the norm, so it's a bit dangerous. They don't know the social norm of, yeah. well, they don't like it against the norm, um, which was why she's like, just do that. It's cool. I'm like, mm, don't really like it. I won't be doing it in two years. She's like, yes, you will. I'm like, no. Nah. Eventually, just gone. The parents definitely project it onto their children. They want their children to be successful, so they can, you know. Well, can yeah, say, it's like my son is a doctor. Yeah, my son's <laughs> a doctor, especially at brunch. You know, all the friends. My son's a doctor. But now, it's now like you say my my son's a business owner. A very successful business owner with 1,200 me- members in his community. That's what she can say. <coughs> I think that's... Whatever. Uh, it's not about her anymore. It's not about her, but she she's, can say it. She's very supportive of now what I do because yeah. she's accepted it works, so it's good. Whatever. Was that after it works? Or, like, was that during... No, they, there's always been a trust that I, like... Because all through my life I've always done, like him, like I've done random shit. eBay, never really got big, but, like, I've always been able to make money yeah. outside of the norm. Match betting was the main one. But then when the business came, it was a bit more cool. But what were you, I don't uh, want this to be about me. What were you enrolled in for university? Um, just your general shit. Like I got, I don't know, I got a business thing. I had a physio thing. Um, I, we didn't have to even get any ATAR marks because we just, COVID year, you just get into what you want. That's crazy. Um, but I was like heavily considering doing that before I come across match betting because I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. It's like my parents want me to do something. I can't just sit at home. It comes back to the parent thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like pressure of yeah. You don't get your own space to think about what you're actually doing. I think that's why people take a lot of gap years. I find themselves after after high school. But I was like, how the fuck do I take a gap year? I've got, got no money. Got no money. Exactly right. Well, so, well, that's when people get part time jobs. They work, they save, and they go away. Yeah. Um, I won't say what I mean. I mean, I'm a university student part time, and. But I joined after going through seven years of, of like my career. So I had time to make up my mind to know what I wanted to do. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I essentially, I got lucky that I didn't go to university. I come across match betting, otherwise I'd be... Lucky. Or you, you can place. call it luck. Or, yeah, but Here we go. Lucky is not a thing. I agree with that, but I, I, I actually love JP. Well, in a sense, I fell, in, I fell into the path I did, and that's why no, I that's a university. choice. You chose not to do university. Actually, no, you know what? Here we go. I love it. It's getting spicy in here. No, I, I actually made... Because you had to... There's a certain cut-off date that you had to apply and I wasn't, like said on what I was doing. So I just didn't do it. I was like, oh, 
if I have to, I'll do it later. Well, I chose uni because I had, like, it was on the thing, you had yeah. to go to uni. I just chose this course. I didn't want to do osteo. I had, no, I remember now, I had things I could go to, and it was like a certain cutoff date you had to fill in your form by, and I just didn't fill in the form. This was before I was doing match betting. So I actually chose not to go, and I was like, oh, I'll just what do it What was your later. plan, though? Didn't have to one. To play footy or something? Did not have one. Just this before ACL? Yeah, well, this is but like subconsciously. This is before I was going to make AFL or something. No, nothing to no. do with that. It's just like I'll just make it work. It, like not even, not even thinking like that, but just somewhere in the back of my mind. You're the oldest, like, yeah. Yeah. In your family. Yep. What? What? Has your parents like t- like taught you how to think like that, or like what? What made you think like that? You just make it work because that's at at eighteen or seventeen or whatever you were. That's weird because no one thinks like that. I don't know. It's just, you got I don't the think anyway. security of. I wasn't thinking specifically like that but i was like well, what's the worst like kind of what's the worst case scenario i'd live at home my parents house get fed every week like exactly right there's well, no yeah, kind of yeah. they obviously want me to do something but i'm under no kind of obligation to go do that and that's probably why i didn't go down that path i think gary v says you know, the best time to take risks is in you know just after high school early 20s because you got your whole life to correct the I, mistakes yeah. or put the lessons you've learned into action Spent a, spent a year at home and moved out. And I guess I make my own path now, so. That's good. Yeah. I don't know. I actually don't know if I was like that <coughs> at 20. My own path, to be honest with you. So I, you didn't go to uni until now? Or you did? Until now. Well, till like last year. Yeah. Yeah, never went to uni. I didn't want to. That's why I'm happy I spent the time out in the workforce learning. You know, and not just what about my career, just learning about life. And then I made the decision at 25, yeah, 26 to go in. Have you travelled much? I haven't, to be honest with you. It's the first time in Melbourne. A bit disappointed. Been overseas? A little bit better. Uh, no. Been in Australia. Australia. Do you have plans to travel overseas? You said something about not liking flying before. Is that something to do with that or you just haven't had the chance to travel? I fucking hate flying. How did you know? I don't think I said that. Did I say it to you? Yeah. You're coming up with things that I have said subconsciously and you're saying that I said them to well, you. Well, this is I weird as a story. It. This is crazy. He has a podcast and somehow I searched the podcast name on our YouTube channel. So I've copied and pasted the podcast channel name and then randomly sent him, like I said, oh, you got a cool podcast. And he goes, how the fuck do you know i got a podcast? <laughs> I'm like, you sent it to me. I know the na- how would I know the name? No one's told me the name. I search it in the Discord, search it in our convos, no, nothing, no sign of it. Yeah, you were the weirdest on like TikTok or something somewhere. No, I yeah. searched the name of the podcast knowing that was the name of the podcast. I don't know, I don't know, I'm it's scared. I'm a bit thing. scared, Lenny. Can we swap, please? But he did, <laughs> he definitely told me in the car here that he hates flying when he got here. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, he, I, so yeah, I don't that's like not. So that's probably Why the Why do you flying though? Because you're a little coward or? <laughs> are you scared? Yes, those, are the wor- those are the words. You know what, I was a bit scared when I first... You, uh, you're the type of guy that's like scared of the turbulence and stuff. How many planes have you been on? not, champ. <laughs> oh, champ. <laughs> How, many <laughs> How many planes have you been He's on? He's been on three flights hey? his whole life. How many planes have you been on? Um, probably like... We're we counting like a trip back. Yeah, just any, any plane trip. Yeah, probably about six, seven. Fuck. So one is here today, one. Okay, eight. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have done that last three weeks. Yeah, well... What do you want that's why I hate. That's why I. That's why. That's you. why I hate flying. Do you want a medal for flying eight times in the last three? Months? No, I hate it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you hate oh, do you it? Hate it, about it? It's it like, is annoying. It's With the like sheep? you're going. <laughs> that's part of it. But you're like you're traveling like an hour and a half. And like you just get in a car and drive there if you like locally. But going to the airport's like some big deal. Going through yeah. security. So that's the annoying. I got screened. Like, do I look threatening? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. What, yeah, according to the um, what, what's threatening? What does it look? I don't know. What, we created what, a look someone, since someone like early two thousand. You come over here. Want to search you? I do too. I was telling you this. Every time I go to the footy, everything I get screened. Hundred yeah, like ten out of ten. You're a fucking times. giant you? though. What does that got to do with anything? You just you just odd. Yeah. <laughs> you're better than normal you're person. Uh, yeah, you're definitely peculiar. Like you're interesting. <laughs> peculiar. Let, let, if you, if I've got a question <laughs> for the audience, if you're listening to this, if you think Lenny is an interesting person in terms of to look at like <laughs> what if you don't like? think he's actually no do Can it the other way looking at me? if you think he's interesting <laughs> to look at <laughs> dislike the video Ooh, on youtube because you know because then we'll know yeah and then if you think he's not interesting to look at just don't, don't do anything but do they count dislikes anymore i don't think they do we can see them can you yeah mm-hmm. interesting interesting, but interesting. Uh, any many people have said <laughs> our, okay, our editor relax 
<laughs> our editor overseas, Roberto, has sent me footage of like, so we'd be filming a podcast, there's three cameras on, right? He was and sending two footage to other people were talking and he's just sitting there in the background doing something and Roberto's got the camera <laughs> looking at him and I'm like, no shit. Because I've since he's got here, I've called him an interesting yeah. person. Like, I've called him an interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah, And then, <laughs> and then just it's kind of, kind of caught on. It's funny, but other people have noticed it too. It's just funny to watch. Well, when I walked in, I was like, well, you're very <laughs> playful and cocky is what my word is. <laughs> It's very. It could be just arrogant. I don't know. One of them. <laughs> it, it's actually. Um, but I like. It's it. not. It's. He doesn't mean it. Yeah, it's just him. It's, it's just, just the way he is. But I like that. I enjoy it. He doesn't mean to be like arrogant or cocky if it comes across like that. It's just how he thinks and how like he just says it as he is cocky, like confident. I was seven foot. I'd be whatever. cocky too. <laughs> seven anyway. foot. That's big. That's all you. What? Um, I was like six five. What's in centimetres? I'm not sure, like 196 or 7. 108 kilos. Big boy. Tank. Um, do you have any questions for Lenny or me? I have any questions for you guys. Well, I had some like match betting questions. Like, I just wanted to know who actually started the system because I think a long time ago I watched a podcast where you were doing Hustler and then yeah. it was either, I don't know if it was exactly Tom or Steve that showed you and you're like, this is elite. Yeah. yeah so so what, what do you mean by starting the so actual method or the business or what? Um, who discovered it out of, who discovered it first out of you three? Steve. Okay. Which is what we've said since day one. Yep. Is that and your then question? how did um, you guys meet Steve? Okay. So I knew Steve through working at the tennis, the AO. Um, we're both uh, were statisticians there, um, and before that, even he, I think he did a year where I was in uniforms and he was in something else, like a two week period where we just worked there because it's cool to work there. Knew him through that, I reckon twenty fifteen ish. So and then maybe twenty sixteen, and then two years later, um, I said to him, "Man, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you have a genius brain. Like, you study like data engineering or math." Uh, aerospace engineering at uni like you got like 99 at ATAR and I'm like bro you are made for match betting like what the fuck are you doing and at that time I think he was just chilling whatever and then he got into it and then within like a month two months he's like this works this way that we hadn't discovered and that's that's how the system oh, so method you, was made so you introduced it to him first and then yep. he went on his own found a yeah through method. through the methods that he yeah, knew okay. from what we taught him he then found his own method yeah. and made it more profitable um and then from there we made a business out of it through covid um yeah and how long were you operating you know as hustler or, or platinum before you met steve so was it a year you were doing nah, so as in meeting steve 20 I don't know, 15 or something. Okay. Platinum started 20, or Hustle started 2020. Okay. System started end of 2020. But the system was existing since like 2018. Mm -hmm. we, we hammered it through COVID. 2020, we just sat on Zoom calls, me, Tom and Steve. Fucking just, yeah, three, yeah. $500 units, whatever. Elite. Um, cool stuff, fun. And then um, end of that year, I, I was always silent in it. I didn't publicise that I was part of the system until a year and a half later. Was there a reason for that? I just didn't want to be associated with the two businesses and then the fact that um, I just, like, I wanted to be behind the scenes and Hustler was mine and then mm. the boys were running that and then eventually we just came together and now we've got the office so we're all one business. It's yeah. not really separate anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the story of that. Yeah. And both your, like, businesses definitely play off each other well. If you're doing both, you... Yeah, elite. and then sports as well is yeah. probably the big one now that's necessary to be top end. Um, question, how did you find the sports system? You've done all... The sports system or...? No, as in like how did you... As in how have you found it? I have I found it. The um, You did both winter... Winter, summer, now... First intake? Winter, yes. So you're OG winter sports. You want to call me Did that? all 29 rounds? Yep. And then you did uh, summer? No. If you want me to get into that, No. Yeah, so I did, leave, I did let my emotions get the better of me. Around August, I lost my sports bet. Okay. And I was, un, I was unsure why for a while, and then I realised I didn't get the concept of match betting like a term deposit. Term deposit, you leave your money in, you let it build up. I 
didn't get that concept, so I was making withdrawals, and I was withdrawing out of my bigger bookies, so my tab and sports bet, and I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure that's why my sports bet got done. So when it was was done, I thought to myself, man, I'm, I'm all my uh, all my accounts are going to fall like dominoes now. So I actually stopped for a, probably a month, <laughs> both. Yeah, I'm like they're going to they're they're, they're going to drop like flies. So I stopped and picked it up probably late August, back again full swing with a new mindset. I was doing some you know HPM in that month as well, just What's without yeah yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, well, I lost my sports bet. I've had it for seven years. And I've lost that. These ones have got to go, but they didn't. Yeah. So that was the reason um, I didn't finish the the, full, the winter one fully, and that's why I joined the summer one because I knew the winter one worked. And I thought, you know. And then you joined again this winter. Yep. And obviously now, what are you on unit size for that? Hundred. Okay. Cool. On uh, yeah, and still fifty on the horses. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Any questions, mate? No, but. Do you have any questions? Sports system. Trickling tour. You have what do you eat? Do me. Do it. What do I eat? What do you eat? <laughs> what do you Fuck, that's seriously, a good one. Look at you. <laughs> what do you mean look Compliment. at you? Compliment. Look at you. What's that supposed to mean? Nah. Look, look at you. What do you mean? You know what it means. Don't mirror. play dumb. <laughs> look, he looks in the mirror every morning. Look. <laughs> He's just giant. Like, what do you eat? What do yeah, I eat? Actually, just explain. a lot of food. Seriously. Fucking, um, man. I eat. This he's yeah, he's still, is not fucking cleaning the dishes. Really? Can't put fucking plates in the dishwasher. I eat a lot of dishwasher. tuna. Oh, that's good. I, I like tuna. A lot of pasta. I love pasta. A lot of rice. Yep. Why am I not as good as you? A lot of beef, a lot of turkey, and a lot of pork. Pork? That's what my diet consists of. Parasitic meat. Are you like watching what you eat and stuff like that? Like yeah. Calories in, yeah? No, not really. I just, I know generally how much I can eat if I want to put on weight. No, generally how much I can eat if I want to lose how weight. How many meals a day? <sighs> Depends how big the meals are, but like... You're talking if I want to put on weight, I'm eating five, six thousand calories a day. He came to my house last year when he started living here. He was eighty. What were you? Eighty nine kilos. Bro, he, he was one hundred and seven within like three months. Fed him good, didn't you? No, one hundred and eleven. How was your bill no, for no, your no, groceries? Oh, well, no, it was only like two weeks. But I'm saying when he came, he was 80, 89. 89, 111 in three months. He I just done his ACL, or whatever surgery, and then he's in the office and he just eat like every two hours, <laughs> fucking meal, fridge, pant, like goes in the thing, cooks up something. And we're just sitting there eating like two meals in here and he's eating four or five by the time we get out. It's fucking funny. You weren't doing that when you are match being though. You are locked in. You weren't eating. No, because I, I was, find myself Because he, he was done. He's, no, I was, wasn't playing, training. I was playing footy when I was match betting. And then <coughs> then I did my knee and then I was in my room mm. the whole time just not eating anything, not training. Wait, so how, how, long, how long did you do your AC, Like how much into your profits were like when you did your ACL? Um, so I'd been match betting... Oh, I turned 18 pretty much a year before I did my ACL. So I was match betting for one year pretty much. Because oh, yeah. I started before I was 18 or whatever. Um, but pretty much a year. So I reckon I made that August month. It was a month I said I made 12K in that month. Did you put a post in Discord? Yeah. I remember reading that. I yeah. just joined. I'm like, wow, imagine. That was <laughs> that was like the first month where everything clicked. So the month before yeah. that I would have made, I don't know, 3, 5K. Yeah. Um, so I'd guess I'd be somewhere between 30 and 50k to that point in a year, um, which is pretty standard. But then things at that time it was, I would say, easier to make money. Uh, because of the promo. Not necessarily. I you was disagree? just. No, I just got very good at certain things. I could find different methods and nail that for a period of time, and then make a lot of money from that. And then I'd stop working and I'd find something else. Um. Stop working, what do you mean? Like the promo would disappear or the yeah. bookie would stop letting you do certain things. Um, but that August month when I did my knee, that was when everything changed. Like I made that 12K and then the next month it was like 25K or some shit. And it was just like full on game changer. That, when you say that, like you said something in your podcast last year, the first ever one you did, you said you need to find more shit to do. I feel like a lot of people in the community right now, and we've been pushing this a little bit more, they're just... Yeah, they're conditioned to just follow the system, There's follow, follow what they're do. told. But like, the, in match betting, is literally endless, yeah, the amount of shit out there. It's so just, why does someone not do that, you think? Well, I did it because I was out there 
trying to work shit out, joining other communities, finding shit out. That's how I got to that position. But if you're not doing that, if you're just sitting there in the co- like do the course and that's it, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna do this, just do this week in, week out. It's like showing up at a job. You're not doing anything else. Well, there was a message this morning. Someone complained. They're like, well, I've been doing this. He's a long-term member, but he said the last three months, 17 units profit. This is a bit of a waste of time sort of thing. Now, that's 17 units on 65%. So I responded to that. I asked him six questions. I said something like, have you taken any of the free calls Tom's been offering every Sunday? One. Yeah, you could put that two ways. You could say that's our problem or we could go that No, it, it is our problem. due respect, that's fully, fully his problem too. No, in but we, we were in... We're trying to make shit better and make the content better yeah, in course. Platinum to give you more guidance Opportunity there. But like, to do if that. you want, like, and then someone else messaged me this morning who's been a member for a month, and he just said I hit a hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar middle last night. It's like I can guarantee you, people like that are just doing one thing, like that you could be doing so much more. Yeah. Like someone last week was complaining, oh, I'm not making enough money. It's like, have you opened up any new accounts in the last three months and got deposit yep. offers? No. This goes, done the horse method, this goes no. back to like what you're doing with different businesses and stuff. You're trying to do shit just to learn more and Throw expose yourself wall, more. See what sticks. Yeah. So and how do you get that out of that? Like that? Do you think you can change that in a human or do you think they've either, either got it or they don't? That's a, it's a, I mean, circumstances, do you have it or you're not? I mean, if you're starving, you're going to go out and make money, right? Surely. You're going to sit there and starve? You have to do something. Well, it's, it's, not well, sure what, to everyone. Yeah, I reckon you think people would just be starved? Well, starving's a pretty extreme thing. Like, I don't think yeah. unless you're I'd homeless the, in the Australia, human, the like human not many people would, are starving. If we had fucking Z Day like today, Z Day, like, or just end of the end of the world apocalypse? as we know it, yeah, yeah, yeah. majority of humans would be fucked. Yeah, survival of the fittest. Like, <laughs> whereas I know I'd say like hundred years ago it'd be completely different because people would be yeah, more. I agree with that. Fight for their survival, whereas now they just give up. So. Uh, too oh, hard. Yeah, um, there was a group I was in, die. Facebook group. Ran, someone random added to me, uh, added me to this. Sorry, and I was trying to convince this guy. Or not convince. I was just trying to introduce him to the idea of bet, match betting. And he spent probably an hour and a half. I sent him one video which explains what a bonus bet is and how to. T- literally showed him three minutes how to turn it over. And he kept asking me, "Can you just send me the, the if you if you're so good about winning, just send me the trifactor on the next race. <laughs> send me the tips on this race." And I'm like, "Man, just watch the video. You'll understand what it is." He's like, "Yeah, but." If you're short winning, then the bookies wouldn't exist because everyone, everyone could do this. And I'm like, how much have you won a loss in your, in your life? He's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And, and he's, he's 60. And he just fully won't, like, it's right in front of him and he won't take it. And it's like, that's, you know, when you're saying people are starving and they won't do it, I don't know. Because he's like, he said to me, he goes, if you've made all this money betting, you're still going to be the same when you die in the ground. Like, everyone's going to be the same whether they made money or whether they lost it on the punt. And I'm okay. like, man, yeah. that's yeah. the fuck? He's but do you want to enjoy your existence or fucking... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's talking about the end. What about the, the I'm journey? Like, <laughs> I'm like, you're paying in the bookies <laughs> holidays. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He goes, that, that's <laughs> fine. I'm like, all right, do that. I had to leave the group because I was getting too angry. Not that he wasn't like, I wasn't even trying to sell him anything. I'm just like, brother, change your mindset. But he's just like, no, nah, I'm done. I can't. He didn't want to look at it. So yes, it's just exposure. Like I do the same thing now, whereas I, I just try and speak to heaps of different people to better myself within the match betting space. That's how I get my exposure to learn more things and you obviously do the same thing within your business like trying to do business and shit how do you expose yourself to more we had a call with a guy this morning who reached out to us well, yours to be, try yours and get us on his site for like an affiliation yeah well, yours be the same as mine you just speak to heaps of people every yeah, day like yeah. I learned so much from 30 minutes on the phone because I want to learn yeah if you're not like think of like what you shouldn't do Tom said this about betting he's like think of everything you shouldn't do or think of everything you should do to lose then do the opposite of that. Mm. So how do you lose? Multi, same game multis, betting more, upping your stakes, betting with emotion. Then do the opposite of that. Same with this. It's like... Or in general sense of life. Yeah. Get, how, get how in the doll, lock yourself in your room. Just do the same thing. Take drugs, go drinking, drink vodka cruises, go on like, TikTok. You can do that. That's fine. Then he's throwing shots. He's about to get it. Well, no, you, you can't like put everyone into a category and be like, that's bad for everyone because everything has a purpose for you. It might not be what you choose to do, but like, it, it's like some people are different to you. Like you're a fucking extremist when it comes to this stuff. And I was exactly like you at your age. Whereas now I've loosened well, what, the shackles a bit. Just like my training used to be obsessive and like my fucking tracking of my food. And if one fucking thing went out of line, I'd crack the shits. It's like, bro, that's more to life than that now. I'm not really like that with my... You've changed a little bit, but when you I mean, with my training, I always am and probably always will be because yeah. if you're doing it, why not do it properly? 
but like just because you can't see some like you, you can't see any value in, in drinking and a drop of alcohol whereas someone else might find it social or good for them to go and have a two drinks with their mates or five drinks with their mates because that's that's part of their life balance of like but you, you can't see the perspective of that though. yeah and you need to have an open mind because not everyone's like you which he struggles with. <laughs> which is fine he's learning this is what me and, dealt with this is what me and james art. speak about yeah he just, he just fucking with rinses, like rinses me because I just shows me different perspectives. You have to have open. Like you have to be able to relate to people. Do you reckon you got those perspectives by travelling a lot? Because you you've travelled a lot, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But as in what specifically? What's but what? I perspectives? know. I just like to see how other people live and open. Like, you yeah. Have just different perspectives in life. To be honest with you. Yeah. I, I would say travelling is like going. I mean, uni's like if you're going. <laughs> can say consider university as learning. It's like every month I'd say of traveling, like let's just say not with a tour guide or like more sort of out there, every month would be equivalent to like six months at uni, I reckon. Oh yeah, like the, you, you I went, fucking my real recent time. trip that I went overseas for a month for, like the amount of people I met and just stories I had and like heard, like it's just like, what the fuck? You come back a new person. Yeah. Just Legit. But whether that's traveling or just again exposure speaking to more people that you wouldn't normally speak to because you're locked in your bedroom or locked in your nine to five job every day in your, in your so own little bubble i think it comes back to exposure again <laughs> yeah the way i like to see this humans their level of knowledge and the, the how powerful they are as a human is everything is a layer of knowledge skill and experience that's it three things so if you're 18 you're gonna have nothing like minimal compared to someone who has 30 40 years old the more knowledge and skills and experience you can put on top and just stack, 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 the more powerful you become. So do that in anything you like doing and just keep stacking. And eventually you'll get to a point where you won't even know your previous level because it now becomes the norm that you're here and then the stack goes higher, higher. Yeah. And then you'll look back and you'll talk to someone that's still back here and you no longer will speak to them anymore because you simply can't relate to them. That's literally why I'm, why I'm here. Leveling up. Well. Yeah, Gator, that was a really good one for that. He, he's the same. And we're seeing a lot more individuals in the community of that same breed or of that weapon breed model, whatever. Um, someone someone said something in the Discord the other day about not everyone wants to be the cookie cutter weapon. And it's like, well, that's fine. But we are going to put more resources into those yeah. people now because our business wants to go down that direction, I think. We're not fornicating, fornicating. arachnids. Yeah. Fornicating oh. arachnids. Yeah. Do you know that one? <laughs> Do you know what that means? You don't, yeah. You want to say it? Well, he's happy with that. That's fine. Believe it, we're not here to fornicate arachnids. Okay, happy with that. You didn't get that first, did you? Yeah, it took me probably. Yeah, I actually had to look it up. So. Arachnid is spiders. Shout yes. out! Shout out what, to. What's fornicating then? Can you give us a detailed <laughs> explanation? No, honestly, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll skip that for now. Really? You seem really interested in this. Because I want you to tell me, teach me. Are you trying to fornicate me? That goes on the other <laughs> side. Are you trying to fornicate <laughs> me? <laughs> Fuck me. Jesus. Don't look at me at those eyes. I think I, I remain <laughs> professional when we've got this type of content getting pumped out. But it's all right. I think it's good. It's <laughs> no, I'm not. No. For the record, no, I'm not. I'd like him to explain it, though. <laughs> this, is like a, this is like a PE class. Oh, I actually didn't know the, the, the actual true definition of it. Do you know the true definition of oh, it? Fornicate arachnid? Yeah. No, no, just fornicate. Oh, um, to reproduce? Nah. Well, it is, but there's having... Have sexual intercourse with someone one is not married to. So you, you, it's, oh, if you're so not married... That last bit kind of is like That's very what important. I mean. I didn't know that <laughs> it's bit. It's very important. Yeah. So when you're married... Yeah, makes sense. Between a man... And especially single women who are not married to each other. Or That's spiders. It. Well, it didn't say single man. Though. I don't know. Yeah. So they, well, who wrote that? Who published that article? Uh, that's yeah, consistent that's across yeah. a number of different definitions. Yeah, it's not married. Not not married. Well. Wow. Interesting. I got a question. Do you are believe you? in marriage? No. Did I say this before? Or was the cameras off? No, I, I don't. don't I do not believe in marriage. Why? I just don't want the <laughs> Matrix government involved in my relationship. Does your partner have the same belief? 
She does. Now, I don't know if she... Like, will she, she get upset that? listening to this? No, because she always says, if you got down on one knee, I'm saying no. So you don't even want to propose? No. Is, there, is that a um, thing people do? They propose and never get married? Um, no, I don't know. So d- well, isn't, that the log- isn't that the step, though? Not sure. I've never... Yeah, I don't know. Because Tom's of this belief. Is he? Tom doesn't want to get married. Mm-hmm. But he said he'd propose. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> probably, probably, probably won't work that out. But yeah. <laughs> Take that out I'm getting married next year. But oh, I personally... Actually. Yeah. I thought it was this year. No. Nah. But oh. I personally don't... I don't love the idea of marriage because I think it's a full-on scam with the money and all the fucking shit you have to do. So, yeah. I'd rather there be 20 people at my wedding. Yeah. If I had an ideal choice But it's very hard When you have a family That's pretty big to do that Because everyone gets Fucking yeah. salty But Just go elope I just don't yeah, like Not sure I just don't like Anyone involved in my relationship Which is the government Get divorced You have to stay You have to stay married together Like on paper for a year Before you can officially <laughs> Get divorced Officially settle up And everything well, Settle everything yeah. oh. There's a guy in like the community that. That's been messaging me For like a, a six to nine months Of him in a divorce and he's fully cooked his match betting because he's had to stop because they're looking yeah. at his accounts yeah. and they don't want him to see him as a gambler and on, yeah. what's the question i don't know if, is anyone no one's a lawyer here so i just thought this oh you're the bloody we had that discussion about the what the cop yes yeah that's a full and, on and that's the guy who i sent you um my sister laughed at that yeah well, I shouldn't say why, my, but yeah, um, she's... My friend's a lawyer too, and she said, yeah, she agreed with the other bloke. So, I don't know, maybe it's different. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Should we get the lawyers in the boxing match? No, nah, unfortunately, <laughs> nah, I fully dis... I think that's a load of shit. Yeah, yeah. Straight well, up. Anyway, what's that's the, that's what you said, if someone was carrying two phones around... No, you, but you said three, you, you could carry 20. Yeah, you could. They're not going to arrest you if you no, have 20 phones. I, that wasn't the... Um, what was the thing? It was, do they have the right... Was it to, to take them? Because what he was saying is, you have to prove they're yours. That's all he was saying. How do you prove they're yours? But the police... that's his. The police won't come to you unless there's a reason to come to you. Yeah, but... And if they do, then you have grounds to tell them to sue them like, yeah, to fuck off. This is, this is the thing. I don't know... If, like I said, I don't know about legalities, but they can put... Um, what's the word? It's like... Not cause, not not probable cause. It's like um, reasonable doubt. Mm. If there's been a lot of phones taken in a mall in the last month, like they can make this up, and he's told me it, like, yeah, well, but you know, stuff happens. But whether that actually gets is what they would do, yeah, is exactly, a different exactly thing. Exactly right. But so we're, we're, it's hard to like argue a point when it's always like it's just a hypothetical, really. It is, and it's hard because in their law, it's like they they have to prove reasonable doubt. And it's like, well, that's like a grey area. So like, then they don't do it. Exactly. Well, some of them do. Yeah. He was telling me that it, he loves it when people arrive with their helmet because he can get them, run their name, and then if there's like drug stuff on them, they they can search everything. That's fine. Yeah. That's all good. But like, yeah. yeah. But that was like that, yeah. I don't think they have much to do if they're doing that, and I think they have yeah. a lot to do generally. Yes. They work hard, honestly. Uh, yeah. That wasn't my question though. Like yeah. legal thing with the divorce. Let's say you're getting divorced and you had like fifty k in the bank. If you started putting that into your sports betting accounts, yeah, you can't split I, a sports I asked betting account. Hey, I asked this guy because I said, "Why aren't you like?" Because he, he, he still yet to join Platinum, but yeah. he wants to. He's got like all his money. He's like, "I need, to, I need to get away from this because they're gonna. It's custody thing. So if they, because obviously match betting is not considered different to gambling. Yeah. So if they see the transactions, they they consider him a gambler, and then that goes against him custody wise on the kids. Mm. So he's like, "I've got to stop." So I'm like, "All right, well." Are they allowed to check your betting accounts? He's like, yeah, well, I have to, I have to disclose all of my betting accounts to this case to, to tell them. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. So I didn't really know what to tell him. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. But in my head, I thought of that too. I'm like, yeah. well, what if you just leave it in your accounts? Dump it all. And then put it there. Like, obviously, um, that's n- not trying to be dece- uh, deceiving in that sense, but, like, can you still just match bet normally? And then that's not your money in your betting account and your bank accounts. But he's like, no, nah, you have to disclose it. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, that for custody. But what about if it wasn't anything custody? Um, I don't know. Let's say you had like you know you know stuff gets split up. But if you put it all into your accounts, that'd like probably make 
like can they though? You'd be in debt to her. Well, whatever. yeah, if it's come out during the cust during the case, if if you've had like I don't know, you had eighty k in your savings yeah. and then it's disappeared to forty, then they can see that. So it would seem that like you've gambled it, really. Has, it's because it takes a year to settle. Uh, I, so yeah, I don't know. I potentially, you're very distraught and you've been putting $1,000 a week in your sports bet. Little do they know, you've been edging. <laughs> and we'll withdraw at a later date. I don't know. I, it was just a thought. I don't, I don't know the right answer. I don't know. I'd like to know. I just thought, that's interesting. <laughs> what's, um, what's your story with your gaming? We'll, we'll wrap this up. Gaming? Soon. What do you mean when you I played, used to game? Yeah, I used to play games a lot uh, yeah, what, on Twitch. How, why did you stop? Because you were saying some off. stupid hours. Give me some, like, give us some stats on the games you played uh, in the hours. I used to play, like, League of Legends. I had, like, 8,000 hours played on that. There was a website called Wasted on LOL, Wasted on League of Legends, and you could put in a username. We're both doing the same. <laughs> 8,000 hours? We're both looking that up. That's fucking 333 days. Yeah, that's five years worth. Um, in how long? Well, probably five. Well, year nine to... Wait, so five years, you said? Well, year nine to whatever. Roughly five years. I, I stopped playing games maybe... Probably when I started my business. Why did you stop? Just time. Uh, also, I, I just... I wish I could go back and stop earlier so I could invest in myself and, you know... I'd love to play games. And I'll you, go you'll get down addicted. That ra- Mate, That was another I've question I had. Are you guys addictive? Yes. Are you, are you, are you addictive? Do you have an addictive personality? Because I definitely do. Oh. I have the worst out of everyone here by miles. <laughs> Depends what for. Yeah, I'd say so. Like, what mm. for? Like, like, I mean, I've, fucking, I've been addicted to video games. Like, yeah? For sure. When? It's through school. Prior to coming here, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't played since I moved to Melbourne. Mine's more obsessive than addictive. I don't know if it's the same thing. You are, in, in what way, trying to like, to be... Best. Just anything <laughs> I do has always been obsessive yeah. and it's n- good and bad. Yeah, I try to be the best at that game, always. I never am. Yeah, I'm, I'm being the, the best at a game is pretty fucked because yeah. you're competing against the whole world, no? Yeah. I'd be try- yeah, I'd no, like that's trying to be the best against my mates or like, yeah, yeah. like at footy training, I want to win the, win <laughs> the running or whatever. Like I was always worse than random people, so I was always, I want to win, I want to win, you know. Always go YouTube, tutorial, how do I do this, how do I... You know, in this scenario, I used to just sink hours into it and definitely a waste of time. I mean, it, it's enjoyable. It was enjoyable at the time. I have friends for life. that I have a friend in Melbourne that I've never s- met before. We always talk because I, I met him on a game. Mm. Yeah, I met him six years, six years ago on a game. Yeah, but it's like uh, you're wasting your life, but you're fucking enjoying the time. If you enjoy it, it's not wasting your life, is it? If I could go back, I would stop and match bet, to be honest with you. <laughs> if I knew it, but then, yeah. Interesting. Any more questions? Leave it there. Yeah. Do you have any questions for the audience or for the Platinum Squad members or for anyone watching? Oh, oh what's your no? What's your goal for this year? You've kind of briefly said it. You said six, six figures. figures. Yeah. Six figures. Okay. Pretty Shoot big goal. St- yeah. So twelve months. Yep. Not twenty twenty four. What makes you think that's twelve months? What yeah. makes you think that's achievable? Like we haven't really spoken about betting at all outside of this either. Yeah. Well, you guys have never had a call, yeah? No, we've yeah. we've never spoke. We know we haven't spoken about betting yeah, either before really this podcast. podcast. Yeah. Um, what makes me think that's possible? I just know that when I do put my mind to something, I, it gets done. Yeah. Like I've done it in, in various other aspects of my life. If I'm passionate about something, I will obsess over it, and I have done that. You know, like like I said with gaming, if I obsess over match betting and I, you know, have a financial reason to. Done. You know what? I always like to set the bar high. I said this to you in the car. Shoot for the stars, you fall short, you land on the moon. So You didn't say that in the car. I did say that in the car. <laughs> you weren't listening to the I know you said that. <laughs> see, if you, if you I didn't remember. say that. <laughs> I was in <just> subconscious. <laughs> no, well, if you have that mindset, then uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go a long way together. Let's do it. Manny? That's it. That's Any I'm questions for the audience? Man. Just random shit? It doesn't have to be betting, just anything. Just put a question in the comments. How do you deal with negativity in your life? I've had a lot of, a lot of negativity and I try to deal with it the best I can, but how does everyone deal with it? Do you, I don't know, do you have a hobby? Do you remove yourself from that situation? Negative, negative things and negative people. Nice, I like that. Leave it there. Yep. Thanks for coming along and... 
bit wet. Is it flight? I don't know. Probably so missed it already. Three thirty. It's twelve fifteen. So you got to be. We'll go. You got two Is hours. Twelve fifteen. We'll yeah. grab some we'll lunch and then we'll do the onboarding. Yep. Cool. Nice. Signing off. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I just did my signing off. <laughs> So if you want to learn what match betting is and how to get started, there's a free course linked directly in the YouTube description. Goes for 60 minutes. It contains a number of videos explaining how it all works and how you can get started for free today.